The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, as a pastor teacher, the flock that has been given under our care, are we really mindful of them? Are we really protecting them? Are we really making an account to see that each and every believer have come to the perfection and completion in the knowledge of Christ? As Apostle Paul mandated for us in Colossians 1, 25 through 29. Are we really doing our work to see the edification complex of the soul of the believers have really reached to be occupied with Christ? Are we really making a point to look and to understand that each and every believer has been called to be occupied with Christ and reach the maximum glorification of our Lord as they take in the word of the Lord as never before as number one priority and take in through the process of three adult stages of this unique spiritual life followed by spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy and then by leading unto spiritual maturity. You may tell these terms are not available in the Bible. Absolutely, they are available in the, time, in the Bible. Spiritual maturity has been given. Spiritual autonomy has been given. And spiritual self-esteem has been given so that you can love the scriptures if you want to love the Christ. Knowing him is loving him. Colossians 3, 2, 1 and 2 doesn't say for us that if you have been born in Christ, then seek those things which are in heaven. That is what spiritual self-esteem is. Your own self-government of spiritual autonomy is Philippians 2.5, the thinking in the mind of Christ. The spiritual maturity is none other but Hebrews 5.14. And what else passages you want? You want the same exact written words in the Bible? In the original Greek, it is the been there for you. Go and search. But what is the problem today? The problem is that this people, they are not able to give what exactly the Bible is telling to tell to the believers. It is not a great joke to become a past teacher. It is not a great thing that we have to rule them with tyranny or anarchy. But rather we need to rule them with complete subjection for the truth. With complete humility. So that we should make sure that every believer has reached the status of maximum glorification of Christ. Through the daily intake of Bible doctrine. And when this righteousness has been credited to your account, and if we once again go on sinning, that is what out of fellowship with Lord God Almighty, it is the first warring discipline, and then the intensified stage of discipline, and then the third one, sin unto death, if you do not judge yourself, as for First Corinthians 11, 30 and 31. Then our Lord told the way he has warned to Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 20, telling to the point, when I have made you a watchman and you have seen that this righteous person, that is what the work of a pastor teacher is, that this imputed righteous believer in our terminology of the church age, if he is once again falling into iniquity, do you know what I will do? Our Lord said, I'm going to place a stumbling block. A stumbling block for him so that he can come back and look and realize why is this stumbling block that is happening. That stumbling block includes the warring discipline, the intensified stage of discipline, taking you till to the point of death. And that stumbling block includes if you fail to realize it, or if you fail to be known by the pastor teacher whosoever is in charge in your church, to tell to you that each and every believer has been called for the maximum glorification of Christ. Then, and if that believer dies without reaching that maximum glorification of Christ, I require an account from you as a pastor teacher, why haven't you told him about this maximum glorification of Lord? Do you think becoming a pastor is a joke? Becoming a pastor and to neglect the responsibility is a great credit for you? Not many to be the preachers of words at long back. And we learn from the passage very clearly. 
and when I give a stumbling block to the face of him, he shall die. And you have not warned him because of that sin which he has been committing. That is what grieving and squelching cannot be. There cannot be any other great sin than grieving and squelching. Lord God, the Holy Spirit who permanently indwells in us. And we, when we lie to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So when he dies in that sin, and I will no more remember the righteousness of him, what he has done. That is what the work could be rewarded. But because of the righteousness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given, that will be accounted to his credit. But the rewards, no rewards except the pertaining point of this body of resurrection one. That's it. No rewards. So our Lord says, I will no longer remember which he did. And the life of him, what he has failed to execute clearly, you will be required. And for an evangelist, and that is what the work, why he is an evangelist, he has a gift to do it. The gift of an evangelist is to warn them about the sin, the sin not to believe in Christ. And when for the unbelievers it has been mandated that surely they shall perish, they are already been condemned, they have not believed. And if you give as a pastor teacher at the altar call, that is what evangelical work, and if you tell them, by believing in Christ in the privacy of your soul, you shall be saved. And if they believe, then their blood has not been required of you. But if they do not, and if they have given, and if you have given them the warning in each and every message, why we call for this to bow on your head and ask unto the Lord in the privacy of your soul to tell that you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is to make sure that we are pure from their blood. That's why Apostle Paul in Acts 20, 26 and 27 tells, I am pure from your blood. I did not shun to declare to you the entire counsel of the Lord. I did not hid anything from me, but rather I gave it to you everything what Lord demanded for me to give to you. What a great truth it is. Can all the preachers today tell that? Can the people standing in the pulpits as an evangelical work, they can do that? If not, correct over these things as we shall continue in the next tape. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge our in Lord. Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.